Hi there. In this business topic video, we're going to take a look at an important operational concept that's closely linked to the efficiency and competitiveness of a business. And it's a concept called economies of scale. The important thing to remember with the concept of economies of scale is that it is a feature of what happens to the unit cost of a business as the scale or the size of the output of the business increases. And economies of scale arise when unit costs fall as output increases. A quick reminder of how to calculate unit costs. Unit costs, that's the average cost per unit produced. And it's a calculation that's going to be expressed in terms of a financial number, isn't it? Because it's a cost. The way you calculate it is to look at the total cost or the total production costs in a period expressed in pound notes or financial terms. You divide that by the relevant output over the same period. So it's total costs. If you're just looking at unit cost of production, total production costs, total cost divided by the total output in terms of units. Let's therefore have a look at how it can happen that cost per unit falls as output increases, where economies of scale are starting to take place. Now, the uh, the key point to remember, of course, is that there are two types of costs in a business. There are fixed costs. Fixed costs do not change in relation to output. They do change from one period to another, but they don't change in relation to output. So in this case of our table here, the first parts of the table, uh, the business has fixed costs of £10,000 uh, per period and variable costs are £100 per unit. So let's have a look how total costs get built up and therefore what the cost per unit is. You can see here, first of all, we've put in the fixed cost number. Fixed costs do not change in relation to output. So whatever levels of production, 50, 100, 150 and rising to 250, fixed costs are going to be the same, £10,000. Variable costs are simply calculated by multiplying the units for example, the first line 50 by the variable cost per unit of 100 pounds. So at 50 units, the total variable costs of 5,000 pounds. And that is then uh, calculated for the rest of the units there. So right at the bottom, 250 units times 100 pounds per unit is variable costs of 25,000 pounds. To get total costs, we simply add together fixed costs and total variable costs. There's the numbers done for you. So at units of 50, fixed cost of 10, total variable cost of 5 makes total cost of £15,000. And to calculate the cost per unit, we then simply divide our total costs by total units. So we divide, for example, at 250 units, we divide total costs of £35,000 divided by 250 units. If you want to have a go at doing that, Pause the slide and maybe just try one or two calculations. And there's the numbers. And you can see that the cost per unit or the average cost is falling as output increases, falling from £300 per unit, if we only make 50, down to 140 if we make 250 units. And the reason for this is that those fixed costs are being spread over a larger number of units. Now, if you want to see economies of scale illustrated graphically, this is the classic diagram. It shows the average cost per unit on the Y axis and what happens as the quantity of output increases along the X axis. And you can see from the shape of the, the red line there that for most of the time, unit costs start to fall as output increases. And that's connected with this concept or it's because of the concept called economies of scale. Now, there is another concept called diseconomies of scale, which we'll look at in a separate video. But what happens here is there comes a point at which production operations starts to get a bit too complicated. And actually, unit costs can actually start increasing beyond a certain output. One interesting part of looking at unit costs and efficiency and economies of scale is to compare different businesses. Let's have a look at this table here, which lists out five businesses each with different output and different total costs. Can you work out the unit costs to see which of the five businesses has the lowest unit costs? Again, if you want to have a go, pause the video 
and then we'll show you the answers. Here we go then, dividing total costs by output for business A, that works out at five pounds per unit. Same for business E. Business C appears to have the highest unit costs. It's only operating at 5,000 units. That makes its unit cost six. But the business with the lowest unit costs is business D, and that has the highest output. That would suggest that business D is benefiting from some economies of scale. It has the lowest unit costs of those five businesses, and they might be in the same industry, which would give business D potentially quite a significant advantage. There we are. Business D has the lowest unit costs and it's operating with the light, with the highest output. Now, a quick few words about the different types of economies of scale. How does it happen? Well, there are two main concepts here, two main types of economies of scale. Some of them are internal. They arise from the operations and the activities of the business itself. And you can also get economies of scale that are considered external. They arise from the industry in, you, in which you operate, in which case all players in that industry benefit from external economies of scale. The internal economies of scale are perhaps the best known and most widely sought after because potentially they give you that advantage over your competitors. Let's just pick out a couple of these. Let's pick out the top one there, buying economies or sometimes, sometimes called purchasing economies. What happens here is that as you get bigger, as you make more, as you spend more with your suppliers, it's often possible to negotiate better prices from your suppliers because of your purchasing negotiation power. But it's also possible because you're buying in greater units and greater quantities to get a better unit price for your inputs into your production uh, process. Simply by having that size, you're able to get a better price, which results in lower costs than a competitor that may be buying in smaller quantities. And of course, another really useful internal economy of scale is marketing. The bigger you get, the more, for example, more stores you have, the more visitors you have to your online shop, the bigger your customer base. Well, the marketing spend, which is a fixed cost, is able to be spread over a much larger range of products and markets and customers. External economies of scale don't necessarily benefit you as an individual business, but they can help a business as a whole reduce its unit costs. And it's often associated with the benefits that come from a concept called clustering, where many businesses in the same sector locate themselves in the same place. For example, all the technology businesses located in uh, Silicon Valley in California benefit from external economies of scale in the same way that the creative and the media industries in London are often grouped together, very close together, and they benefit from having many specialist suppliers nearby, access to a ready supply of highly talented potential recruits and people. That pool of skilled labour is quite an important benefit if you're located in the right place. There we go. That's a brief introduction to this concept called economies of scale. And the key thing to remember is that they arise as a business gets bigger in size and as output increases, unit costs decrease.